your presence in this place even now hallelujah we're going to sing a few songs just to stir up the atmosphere the first song says open the eyes of my heart is that your desire tonight we want to see him tonight amen we want to see him move through this place we're going to start with that i invite you to sing with us lift it up we'll sing it through a, a few times amen and once you get it just jump on in Put your hands together in this place.
say that. Say holy, 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 holy. so good to us. You've been so faithful. Hallelujah. We would not be if you were not who you were in our lives. And God, we're so, ah, we're so desperate. We want to, we're longing for you. Hallelujah. We ask that your Holy Spirit dwell among us. Holy Spirit, you are welcomed in this place. Saturate this place with your love and your mercy and your kindness. Hallelujah. 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 Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, your word. There's nothing worth that could ever come close nothing can compare you are living hope 
And I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves, where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone.
a sweet sound in this in this place one more time say
you might say welcome to Well, bless him. Well, bless him. Well, bless him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sin far away. Oh, and rising, he justified me.
nice service look like. All right. Now, Andy done took us in to the throne room, OK? Now, I'm going to need you to act like you happy that you got this. All right? Well, bless you. All right? Uh, now. All right. Give us the Go on, sit down. Hallelujah, everybody. God is a good God, is he not? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And tonight, we done rolled up in here on a Friday night with Ian trying to upset us and all that. But we done rolled up on Friday night service to hear a word from the Lord. All right? Now, I'm his sister. I just want y'all to know that. I'm the eldest of the sisters. Got some old folk. They here too. Praise the Lord. But tonight we came to encourage, to push, but more importantly, we came to lift up the name of Jesus. And it has been a week among weeks. Am I not right? Now, right now, they told me, they gave me a mic, y'all. And they told me I could talk. <laughs> Praise the Lord, Bishop. <laughs> At this time, we do have a program. And um, I do know a little bit about order. And what I don't know, they wrote it down right here. So, <laughs> praise the Lord. So, I am Debbie Harris, if you haven't quite figured that out. But at this time, we're going to get just a little more serious. And we're going to have our prayer by our deacon, Misha Dawson. Following her, um, we're going to get the Old Testament reading by Lady McClurkin. And following her is our steward in training, Irene Belt, who's going to come right after her. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord, church. If you guys could just lift your hands as we just invite, continue to invite the presence of God into this place through prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this day and how you've carried us through every moment. You are an awesome and a faithful God. We honor you today just for who you are. Your word says this is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. We are excited and we are grateful to be here just to worship you. And so, God, I thank you for this moment that you've carved out in time. It was ordained by you even before the beginning of time. Thank you, God, for this month of birthing. And, Lord, we thank you for the first son that will be birthed in this ministry. God, we are requesting that tonight you continue to fill the room with your presence, for we can't do anything without you, nor do we want to. We pray for your glory, O oh God, to rain down in this place. I pray tonight will be forever imprinted in our minds as we give you the honor and we celebrate what you are doing in the earth. Lord, even now give Rusty Saunders peace in knowing that you've already gone before him. Let him say only what you've given him to say as he ministers to your people. Lord, I ask that you bless his family exceedingly and abundantly over everything they could ever want or that they could think. Let the word tonight, oh God, take root in the spirits of your people and we will be so careful, God, to give you all the honor and all the praise. It is in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus I pray. Amen. Thank you. 
while you're standing, if you can turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 5, please. For your hearing, I'll be reading from the New King James Version, verses 11 through 14. And it came to pass when the priests came out of the most holy place, for all of the priests who were present had sanctified themselves without keeping to their division. And the Levites, who were the singers, all those of Asaph and Heman and Jaduzon, with their sons and brethren, stood at the east of the altar, clothed in white linen, having cymbals, strings, and instruments and harps, and with them 120 priests sounding with trumpets. Indeed, it came to pass, when the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound, to be heard in the praising and, say, and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and the instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, his mercy endureth forever. That the house of the Lord was filled with the cloud, so that the priests could not continue ministering because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. The word of God. Good evening. If you guys could turn with me to St. John chapter 4. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Chapter 4, verses 22 through 24. And it reads, You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Amen. 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 in truth. That's what we came to do tonight. At this time, we don't want to delay any further. We're going to welcome a musical selection from New Covenant Baptist Church and the Breath of God Choir. Put your hands together. Oh, let's hear it for the boys in the pain. Amen. All right. Thank you. 
y'all know what y'all be doing on Friday night. Come on, put your shoulder in it. Come on. Hey, 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 hey. Come on. Y'all better stop acting funny. Come on. Hey, hey. Some of y'all ain't been out in a long time. You know how you used to be there, Odell's, or Gatsby's, Silver Shadows. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hey, 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 hey. Woo! Woo! Anyway, anyway, anyway. Anyway, anyway, anyway. You bless me. Come on. Anyway, you bless me. Y'all better hear it. Anyway, anyway, I'll be satisfied. Come on, clap your blessed hands. And give our God some praise. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Clap your hands again. Now clap your hands, all ye people. And shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Somebody, you owe him a praise today. Come on. You owe him a praise today. After the week you had, you owe him a praise today. Come on. Find that neighbor. Say, as good as God has been to you. You can't afford not to, to praise his name. That's the wrong neighbor. Come on, I dare you. Get out your seat to, and go find somebody. Say, as good as God has been to you, you can't afford not to, to praise his name. Now look at your neighbor and say, now that we're here, let everything that have breath. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, thine the glory. We give God praise today. Lord, have mercy. Can you just give God praise for just what just, what just happened? <laughs> Amen. We thank God for all of you, and we welcome you to the hill. We welcome you to the hill, and we are mighty glad that you are here. And so we give you greetings and salutations today and we're so thankful for your being in the house amen i know his picture is plastered across the face of that paper in your hand but this ain't a future amen amen and this ain't a spectator sport in here amen we come to lift the man of god as he sits in a different chair Amen. To do what the Lord said. Can you just encourage his heart tonight? Come on. If you love him, can you encourage him tonight? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Apostle Waters. I had to tell him to shut up a couple of times because he used to directing stuff and telling people what to do. I said, I ain't, I'm not there. Uh, I ain't, I ain't put no oil on your head yet. Just shut up and sit in that chair till it's your turn, amen. Ain't his turn yet. <laughs> uh, but we thank God and we welcome all of you into the hill tonight. Uh, we're grateful that you're here. We're glad you're here. Anything that we can do to make you stay more comfortable, you let us know, amen. Amen. Get so excited that you throw your wig in the air. You kick off your shoes. You run around the church. Amen. Amen. Only thing I ask is if you, it's a lot of us and it's hot in here. So if you got to do something, the bathroom's over on my right, on my left. Don't let nothing loose in the house. Amen. Amen. So y'all need to laugh a little bit. Y'all too tight. We laugh around here. That's why we're going to live a long time. Amen. Amen. So we welcome all of you, all of the preachers and pastors in the house. Would you stand tonight? Would you stand? All of the preachers and pastors. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. 
All right, now I need y'all to do me one favor. You know, y'all done been where he was before, right? Y'all done been where he was. Amen. Y'all done been where he was. Amen. And so, you know, a lot of people that come in your family and stuff, they don't really like to say amen. Amen. So I need all of the preachers and pastors to come on to the front row for me. Apostle Waters and Mama Sap and a couple of y'all other preachers. And Craig, they tell me you preaching something around there. Uh, Dr. Ernie. Yeah, y'all come on, come on, come on to the front row. Uh, Pastor Daniel Kennedy, y'all come on to the front row and help the preacher tonight. Now, I'm the bishop. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not suggesting it. I'm, I'm telling you to come on to the front. Amen. God bless you tonight. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. Y'all look right good too. Y'all look right good on the front row. Amen. Come on. Craig don't know what how to do. He ain't need to fix nothing here tonight. He don't need to play the organ. Go on, sit on the front row and be a preacher tonight. Amen. Amen. They don't know I just set them up because come offering time, I'm going to ask all of them to stand with me and give it. Amen. <laughs> uh, but listen, we share love. We like to hug and love on one another around here. So put your mask on. All that stuff you got to do. Musicians, give me some jam. And y'all stand up and go greet three people and tell them it's your birthing season. It's your birthing season. Come on, stand on your feet. This is fellowship time. Uh, come on, come on, come on. That's it. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Trouble don't last. Trouble don't last always. We thank God for all of our worship participants uh, that have graced us tonight. Lady Andy Kennedy and the praise team. Come on, let's give them a hand tonight for serving an excellence. Rusty and I were laughing in the, in the office, I said. Lady Andy Kennedy. <laughs> I remember when I'm going to stop right there. Amen. But just it's a jewel to see Andy grow up in the grace of God and amen be found by a gentleman and a scholar uh, Daniel Kennedy. Amen. And so we bless God for them and their ministry. And then we thank God for our worship leader tonight, Ms. Debbie Harris. That's my Deb tonight. We thank God for all of the you that have prayed and read the scriptures. And uh, thank God tonight in the house, Pastor Ernie McNair and Covenant. Amen. 
That's my brother there. We thank God. We got all of these preachers in, in the house, all of these pastors and leaders, and we honestly welcome you. You already know my affection to you, you, so I don't need to stand in the pulpit and uh, uh, share no long dissertations. Amen. One of my spiritual mothers is in the house, Dr. Eva Sapp. Amen. Yeah, that's mama there. I don't play about her. I fight you on the parking lot. Maybe even in the foyer about her. And then my brother beloved, Apostle Charles Waters is in the house. Yeah. Where that hat at you had on earlier? <laughs> don't get shy now. Your brother gonna need that. You know, My dome a little bigger than yours, so make sure it's a expandable one. Amen. But you look right good in that. Amen. 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 I'm going to have to call Felicia and ask her what she's been doing. Amen. You know, I know you can't touch her, but she must have been talking to you because you look quite debonair. <laughs> yeah, they get ready to get married, y'all. Yeah. 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 All right. I'm going to leave it alone. Amen. And uh, we thank God for you tonight. Our wife, I mean, Rusty's wife is in the house tonight. <laughs> Lady D. Saunders, won't you stand and wave? Come on, stand up, stand up, stand up. That's right. Hallelujah. Thine the glory. Yes, sir. Ain't nothing you can say. Nothing you can say. Say the wrong thing and that. That certificate is going in the shredder. Amen. <laughs> Amen. His family is here tonight. His daughter, his daughter, his sisters, family. Come on, stand. Saunders family, stand tonight. Stand. Stand. Look at them. Don't they look good? Azaria, these parents, we thank God for you being in the house tonight. Amen. We appreciate your nephews and all of y'all in them, amen? And uh, we truly celebrate God for all. We thank God for my staff here at the Hill. And uh, we just appreciate you tonight. Yeah, I told him, I said, you the first sons. I think I got six daughters in ministry. and He's the, he's the first son, so they give him the blues. He get mad, and, you know. They agitate him and pick on him. But that's why we're here tonight, because he's the brother, he's the first son, and uh, the occasion is simply this. He's been hiding from God, and ducking and dodging, and, and so he wound up, he thought he was going to come up on the hill and hide some more, but he don't know I'm a tattletale for Jesus. I'm a tattletale, I'm going to tell it every way I can tell it, and uh the Lord has called him for such a time as this to get off the keyboard, to put away his songs, and declare the works of the Lord while it is yet day. I know that God has called him. We've been friends for 20 some years. I've watched him go in and out and duck and dodge and weave and He's in his birthing season. Yeah, he's always used to giving. And now he's going to give you the best that he has for the Lord. He that have an ear, let him hear tonight what the Spirit of the Lord says unto the church. The spirit of the Lord is upon him. He has an anointing to preach the gospel. He's been tried by fire. He's been tested by his bishop. The word he has in his belly is sound. And he has the oil of God for the occasion. 
And so we are looking forward to what the Lord will say in this house from Louis Rusty Sanders. I know he get all grown with y'all. Say, Rusty, his name is Louis. Amen. I'm his spiritual parent, so I get to say that Louis. Louis. Y'all say it with me, Louis. <laughs> Who preached tonight, Louis? Who stood up there, Louis? <laughs> And so we, I'm excited about what God is doing in his life. I'm excited that the Lord chose this time in this season of his life. And God is maturing him in the things of God. He's been playing, y'all know, for ever since he was two. He's been playing something. And tonight, uh, he's switching gears. The Selah note in the text is a Hebrew term. And we're going to shift tonight. He's going to stand behind the sacred dust. And he's going to use the gift that was put in him from his mother and from his father gift that was stirred up by Apostle Ken Robinson. And now that which will be before you tonight. He's been kicking and screaming, scratching and crawling. Trying to get me to postpone the night. Bishop, don't you want to cancel it? Tried to turn the sermon in late so I would You don't know I've been through that with girls. <laughs> My oldest daughter in the spirit tonight. I wanted to change my mind for her. Bishop, I just don't know. You're going to take what you don't know and stand behind that desk. And so it's something about them first ones. And this one is coming tonight. To finally give God a complete yes. A complete yes. <laughs> Extend your right hand a blessing towards him. Say, Louis. We're praying for and with you. And with you. Preach, the word. Preach the word. Now, if you know you're here for the right reason in the right season, clap your hands and applaud God. After covenant comes to give us a sermonic selection, the next voice you will hear from behind the desk, minister in training, Lewis Rusty Saunders, is coming to give his initial message from the word of God.
Since you're already standing, forget about me right now. And come on, somebody lift your hands and just give Jesus glory in the room. Come on, I know we're excited about the moment, but the moment is nothing without the master. So everybody, come on, just take a moment and from your spirit, open up your mouth and give the Lord glory. Come on. Come on, give him glory tonight. Give him glory tonight. Give him glory tonight give him glory tonight all right well praise the lord everybody now uh i don't know how this is gonna go tonight so y'all just flow with me i've been in church all my life so it's probably gonna mix between clown and church i don't but uh we're gonna go with it uh you may be seated tonight the presence of god we give god praise for being here now don't pay me too much attention i'm gonna do a combination of stand and sit is that all right I'm glad you approved because i was gonna do it anyway <laughs> you know what i'm saying i was gonna do it anyway by this time next year both bishop and i will both be running yeah we're not gonna have to sit and minister yeah Watch it, watch it, watch it, yeah, all right, all right, that was, that was, that was y'all's test, y'all, y'all all right, have y'all right now, I need you to be on guard for me because I'm liable to run at any moment, so, make sure you stay ready. I want, listen, 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 y'all hush, because I ain't got much time. I'm on a time. I want to give God praise for being here tonight. Um, the journey has been what it's been, but we're here now. And God, I, I thank you for trusting me. Got to thank my pastor now, Bishop uh, McClurkin. A.O. McClurkin, come on, give him a hand, please. It's, it's a uh, transition in our relationship because we started as friends. We've been buddies and pals for so long. Now that dynamic is shifting. So it's a little different for me. But as time goes, uh, it's getting smoother. I bless God for you, sir, and for your, your trust. And yeah, I trust you was hearing right too, you know what I mean? I know it was had to be confirmation, but amen. We're gonna see in about 15 minutes, amen. We're gonna see if uh, if he heard if he heard right or not. We're gonna see. Um, 
Lady Fee, God bless you tonight. Let's give her a hand. Amen. We honor you for your friendship tonight. All the leadership of the hill, my now sister. <laughs> all of the uh, tears of leadership of the hill. Uh, thank God for all these preachers here tonight. That is, this is just crazy to me that uh, you all, uh, old church would say, found it not robbery to come and support. I really, 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 I'm, I'm honored that y'all did this. Um, I pray you're not disappointed. <laughs> uh, I got to say to a couple of folks, I'm really um, just, I, I got to call a couple names. Uh, Apostle Waters, bless you, sir. Uh, it's, it's an honor. Most of y'all don't know Apostle Waters. If you get to know him, you're going to be real happy. He, he's He's that dude. He's that cool dude, but he's that he's that man of God. Um, thank you, sir. Pastor Alicia uh, Waters, God bless you tonight. She don't like me calling her pastor, but that's exactly who she is. And all of the friends and family from the Bethany Church that's here tonight, God bless y'all. I appreciate your support. Uh, much of the praise team is here tonight. My drummer, uh, Minister uh, Melvin, is here tonight, he and his wife. God bless you, Jackson. Uh, let me just uh, shout out real quick the newest elder in the room, Elder Craig Wheatley. He was just ordained, just uh, ordained as an elder. Give you praise tonight. Pastor Danny, God bless you. Rodney Harris and I call her Mama Eva. Love you so much. Thank you for being here. And um, all the others, if, if I missed, I, I'll catch you later. But again, I'm on the time uh, limit. I must thank my, uh, my spiritual father, Apostle Kenneth Robinson, um, and spiritual mom, Lady Lynyard Robinson. God bless y'all. I'm, I'm pretty sure you're watching or you're going to catch this later. Uh, I have some parents in North Carolina, Apostle A.G. Mullen and co-pastor Vanessa Mullen that uh, show watching and the family there in North Carolina. I pray that you guys are safe uh, through the storm that's passing through your way. But to the first family there, God bless you and all those at Abundant Life that are watching. Yeah, my, my sisters and, and my brother is here tonight. Came down from Delaware. Guy, wave, wave your hand. Y'all don't know Guy. And my in-laws are here, Deacon Jerry Pauline and my grandchildren, Azaria and Kyrie's around here somewhere. My daughter Erica is in the room. Come on. Uh, my son is uh, working tonight. He's, he, he's good. He, he talked to me and that all is well. But Drew Hill's in D.C. tonight. I, I, I took you their money, Doc. Go ahead. You know, you, know. <laughs> you got to eat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and um, the absolute love of my life um, she's still my dream girl she's still she, she's still my dream girl she's still my dream girl and uh, yeah we we hear nothing from over here yes yes this is like cut, cut off from cut off from over this way I love you baby she is my biggest fan she's my biggest fan she's my biggest fan Thank God, real quick for my my band, my road, my 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 right hand right here, Gordon, my drummer. That's my right hand. That's my right hand. My sister Debbie, thank you for um, expediting for us tonight. I was blown away last night, and I got to move. I was blown away last night. We were doing rehearsal with uh, my daughter Andy. Yo, ain't she incredible? Um. I'm just, I'm just blown. That's right, Doc. That's right, Doc. You got to go home. Come on. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's amazing. Real quick, like I said, Pastor said, when we were talking in the office, and now she's Lady Andy Kennedy. But it's, it's also amazing for me to see her bringing up these young ladies, like I kind of trained and worked with her when she was their age. It's crazy. And I'm, I'm yo, I'm proud of you. 
you you are killing worship leader. You are a major worship leader. But I was saying I, we were having rehearsal at my house last night, and um, she didn't have a tenor yet. She said, my tenor's on the way. So, okay, I'm like, okay, okay cool. We've been working it out. I'm sitting in the tenor, just, you know, I was going to leave the room. No, stay in here. And uh, heard, heard a knock on the door. Thought I heard a knock on the door. I said, is that your tenor here? She, she said, yeah, probably so. And in walks in, in comes my beloved friends from Sanford, North Carolina, brother Jay and Rakita Taylor. And I'm just totally blown. They drove up just for this tonight, and they're going right back tomorrow. Now, that's love. Come on. <laughs> Pastor Vernon Miles, God bless you. Prophet Miles, wife, my good friend Tom, bless you, man. Uh, the minister himself. M my guy, Maurice. That is my, let me tell you something, that's one of my best friends in this world, Maurice. God bless you, man. Thank you for being here, bro. And one of my very, very, very best friends in the world, Pastor Ernie McNair. He is my friend. He's my producer. Let's go. Let's, uh, let's roll here tonight. Uh, you may find me doing a thread somewhere through here tonight of some things I always wanted to say if I was a preacher. <laughs> so, um, now listen, I'm, Bishop made a mistake and told me to be me. That was probably a mistake, if, if you know me. <laughs> but he told me, go ahead and be me. So we're going to do that, uh, amen, on tonight. Uh, journey with me, if you will, to the book that answers to the name of Samuel, the first installment. Simply said, turn to 1 Samuel, please, chapter 15, if you will. <laughs> This is a word house, so we're going to read a few scriptures here, but bear with me. We're going to roll through it uh, quickly. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 15, I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. One day Samuel said to Saul, it, is, it was the Lord who told me to anoint you as king of his people, Israel. Now listen to this message from the Lord. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies has declared. I have decided to settle accounts with the nation of Amalek for opposing Israel when they came from Egypt. Now go and completely destroy the entire Amalekite nation. Men, women, children, babies, cattle, goats, camels, rabbits, cats, uh, ants, everything, donkeys, kill everything. Now I'm quite sure that there was somebody in the crowd that did something like this. Oh, big man, ain't it? Yeah. Kill everything. So Saul mobilized his army at Talem. They were 200,000 soldiers from Israel and 10,000 men from Judah. They rolled in that deep, didn't they? Now, then Saul and his army went uh, to a town of the Amalekites and lay in wait in the valley. Saul sent this warning to the Canaanites. Move away from where the Amalekites live or you will die with them. For you showed kindness to all of the people of Israel when they came up from Israel. So the Canaanites packed up and left. Then Saul slaughtered the Amalekites from Havilah all the way to Shur, east of Egypt. He captured Agar the Amalekite king, but completely destroyed everyone else. Saul and his men spared Agog's life and kept the best of the sheep and the goats, the cattle, the fat calves, and the lambs. Everything, in fact, that appealed to them. They destroyed only what was worthless or poor quality. Let's skip down to verse 13. When Samuel finally found him, Saul greeted him cheerfully. May the Lord bless you, he said. I have carried out the Lord's command. Then what is all this bleeding of sheep and goats and the lowing of cattle I hear, Samuel demanded. It's true that the army spared the best of the sheep, goats, and cattle, Saul admitted. But they were going to sacrifice them to the Lord your God. We have destroyed everything else. But Samuel replied, what is more pleasing to the Lord, your burnt offerings and sacrifices or your obedience uh, to the voice to, or your obedience to his voice. Listen, obedience is better than sacrifice and submission is better than offering the fat of rams. 
Rebellion is as sinful as witchcraft and stubbornness as bad as worshiping idols. So because you have rejected the command of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Let's pray. God, we thank you again for this moment, for this time. God, use my mind, use my mouth. I come in agreement with my earlier prayer that you would be glorified. Your people will be edified and someone tonight would change a direction and walk more closely with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So as we get going here tonight, uh, I, I, I want to throw a couple of quick scenarios at you, okay? So let's say that it's Christmas time and we're at the mall. You just got off of work. God bless you, Maestro. It's good to see you, man. Um, and you, you just got off work and the mall is packed. You can't find a parking space no closer than a half mile away, it seemed like. And you keep, you just circled the lot for the fifth time now. And it's this one handicapped spot that seemed to be calling your name. Shh, shh, ain't nobody here. And you say to yourself, well, I'm just going to be a minute. It was you, wasn't it? Somebody called the police and tell her, I'm just, just going to be a minute. And then you come outside and you got a $300 ticket and you got the dirt to be mad and you the one that was out of order. Let me give you another. Let me give you another. Uh, it's Christmas time again. We're going to be doing some baking. You call them kids and go, look here. I'm about to bake a cake. Don't y'all be running around here stomping and carrying on and make my cake drop. It's going to be a problem. Now, you say to the littlest one, hey, come here. Hot. Stove is hot. You understand? Hot. Stove is hot. 15 minutes go by. <laughs> What's wrong? That's the mother. She come out. What's wrong? Oh, you touched the stove. The father ain't moved. Nope. He ain't moved. We just talked. What's the matter with him? He touched the stove. What father gonna say? I told your dumb tail, don't touch that stove. It's gonna be hot. Don't worry about it. He ain't gonna touch it no more. He's screaming and hollering. He's good. All because he didn't what? Follow instructions. Let me give you one more real quick. This, this might not relate to anybody in the room, but I'm going to throw it out here. You tell people, never leave home without your cell phone. And always keep a charger everywhere you are, just in case. Because you never know. This probably does not relate to anybody in the room here. Okay? Lo and behold... You just don't pay too much attention to it. Leave your phone home again. You're on a country road. You done wore the wrong color skin from the house. And you done got a flat tie. So now you got to walk your happy hips up to somebody's house in the 2000s, late 2000s, and ask, can you use the phone? And first of all, most people don't even have house phones no more. But again, you, you wore the wrong color skin out the house. But you got to walk up to somebody, uh, can you, bro? You know what I'm saying? When if you had just done what you were told to do in the first place, I can't hear you. You'd have been in a better position, right? Okay, cool. So basically what we just talked about was some uh, examples of disobedience, right? All right, so let's, let's move on. If there's disobedience, that means it must be some obedience, right? So Webster, um, Marion uh, 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 gives us the definition of obedience as an act or instance of obeying. That was decent. I like the B uh, definition better. The quality or state of being obedient. And their example is children should learn obedience and respect for authority, which kind of lets us know that respect and obedience go hand in hand. What you respect, you'll be obedient to, right? So tonight, if I were to tag this message, <laughs> it, is that what y'all say, tag it? If you'll tag it. If I were to give it a title tonight, I'm starting to get comfortable now. This might be a problem. I would, I would title it, The Benefits of Obedience. <laughs> Okay, I'm all right. I just ran down to the corner, but I'm back. <laughs> all right. Now, let's, let's, let's talk about Samuel. Now, although uh, the books are named after Samuel, it's not because he necessarily authored the books. I'm talking good now. You're missing it. 
uh, Samuel, is, <laughs> the books are called Samuel mainly because they talk about Samuel's life, talk about his childhood, his, his, his government. And uh, we also find that these books contain um, the history of the reign of two of the most important kings in biblical history, Saul and David, who were both anointed by Samuel. The book also teaches us about the, um, the transition from judges to implementing a monarchical system. In other words, we're moving from when judges ruled, and the judges in this case were Samuel and his sons, to when one cat called all the shots. Are you with me? All right. So uh, Samuel, he, he was a just judge. Samuel was with it. He, he, was, he was just right there. He was a just man of God. That's spelled M-A-N-D-O-V-G-A-W-D. For those of you taking notes. M-A-N-D-O-V. Write it down, Tish. G-A-W-D. He was a man of God, all right? But his boys, them sons, <laughs> listen, them boys were something. If you had a couple shekels or the right fatty calf, you know, it could be a little spotted lamb or something. But you bring them boys something, you can get their plug. You know what I mean? Them, boy, them boys were doing some things. <laughs> them other judges, and the people would complain about it too. But Samuel, he was true blue. Samuel was straight up man of God. Now notice here real quick, let me just uh, pause. There's transition taking place. But transition does not mean finality. Because although Samuel was the last judge... God still used him to usher in his next move. And because Samuel did well in his last position, God used him in the next position. But wait a minute, check this out. Not only did God use him in the next position, nothing went down unless Samuel's voice and hand was on the move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so listen, turn to somebody for me real quick. I, I, I ain't going to be one of them cats that got you all night. But just turn to somebody just real quick and just tell them, uh, uh, handle what you're in well. Yeah, yeah. Handle what you're in well. That 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 job that you're on now, handle it well. Uh, that relationship that you're in now, and I'm not just talking about love relationship, because you don't know who God's going to connect you with. But uh, but handle those relationships well. Uh, the house you're living in now, handle it. What well, the car you're driving now, handle it well, because you don't know what's coming behind this. Lady Fee, you handled your last assignment well, and look what God did for you in the next. Listen, this piece right here that I'm talking about, it's a good job for some people, but it's a warning for some others. Because some of us are living on grace concerning what we're in now. Because we're not handling it well. But please let me remind you tonight that grace runs out. Grace has an expiration date. Lamentations 3, 22, 23 tells us the faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning, not his grace. And they're not interchangeable, so don't confuse the two. Grace and mercy are not the same, so don't confuse the two. So listen, I don't know who needed to hear that tonight, but everybody in the room ought to lift your hands and say, God, I thank you that you did not let grace run out on me before I could get it right. Thank you, God, that you did not let grace cut off before I had a chance to get it right. Because listen, we've all needed grace at some point or another. The thing is, we shouldn't live there. We shouldn't live needing that grace. Let's move on. We got to go. The Israelites, although, listen, God was their everything. He rescued them from the hand of Pharaoh. He was their defender, their deliverer. 
uh, 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 he, he, he helped them win battle after battle. And still, they were always bucking against God. And they rejected the Lord's counsel when he told them that you should be ruled by judges and prophets. Instead, they asked God for a king because everybody else around them had kings. Listen, the end thing is not always the best thing. And sometimes God will give you what you want to show you that it wasn't what you needed. I'm going to move because I might get put out of here. I don't know. But our focus tonight is on King Saul. Just a bit of background on Saul. Uh, Saul, uh, I'm going to mix this up because I got to cut this thing down, all right? So Saul was from the tribe of Benjamin. Now, Saul in his tribe was the tallest cat in the tribe. The scripture declares that he was head and shoulders above everybody else in the tribe. He was the big, good-looking joker, right? But his heart wasn't right, right? Saul's heart wasn't right. He was good-looking. He was tall, but his heart wasn't right. I'm pausing. This is called a pregnant pause. I learned that from Pastor Heffern. <laughs> it's called a pregnant pause to let you think about that for a minute. He seemed to be perfect, everything good, but his heart wasn't right. So, and nothing in his family was ever supposed to inherit the crown. They came from the tribe of Benjamin. It was the smallest tribe. Uh, it was the least of them. And, 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 and Saul even reminded Samuel when he came to tell him that God wants to use you. Yeah, me? Come on. Let, man, man, I come from Benjamin, bro. We ain't nothing. We ain't never been nothing. None of my people, people, but still God wanted to use me. Now, you'll find, find what I'm talking about in chapters 9 and 10 if you want to check it out. But you see, although Saul wasn't ready at the moment, God always prepares you for what he's sending you to. And God had already started working on Saul's heart. But when the people heard what was going down, the people was like, <laughs> you know, they, they came talking about it. You talk about Saul? Prophesying? Tall Saul. <laughs> Mr. 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 Kish, them boy from up top here. Rich Mr. Kish, them boy. Saul. The, the next what? <laughs> Dude told him, look here. Take two of these shekels. And you go down there and get me a bag of that good, good juice smoking. Because I know you're talking about so. Who you get it from? Samuel boy? Them judges? Because you know them boys keep, keep, keep some good, good. And dude came. He said, no, nah, man. Um, I ain't smoking nothing. But listen. O, o, OG Samuel said it. And dude said, wait a minute. OG Samuel said it? Yeah. You told my prophet Samuel said that he was going to be the next king. Well, Listen, it must be true. Let me tell you this. I ain't going to charge you for this. Whenever you step out to do something from God, there's always going to be some of these clowns around. That's going to doubt. They're going to talk trash. You know, but isn't it just like God to pick the least of them to make them the greatest of them? But even though Saul doubted himself and questioned God's calling on his life, I can kind of identify with that. <laughs> Even though he was afraid, he still had enough sense to believe God was in this because everything the prophet said came true. He told him, when you walk down here, you, you, you're going to meet some cats with some donkeys. You're going to go a little further. You're going to see some cats prophesying. You're going to be one of the cats that's doing the prophesying also. And everything that Samuel told Saul was going to happen, happened. So he had at least enough sense to say, well, maybe this. So let's move to the text real, real quick. Uh, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to have to walk out, Bishop, in five minutes or something. I don't know. But let's, let's look at verse 3 in the text. Te the text says, now go and completely destroy the entire Amalekite nation. Men, women, children, boy, we've, we've already been there, right? So one of the first questions that I had was, why did God tell him to destroy everything, including the animals. I didn't understand why he had to kill the animals, right? Because they're animals. They couldn't really do nothing. I thought the babies was hard. But I guess when, when you wipe out a line, you're wiping out everything that could come up to you again. So I did some research, as I do, because little stuff like this gets to me. And I found this piece of, of, of literature called called the Midrash, which is it's an ancient uh, commentary. It's a, wow. uh, talked about Hebrew scriptures. And I come to find out that the Amalekite people were sorcerers. Mm -hmm. 
and they could change themselves into animals to avoid catch. So he had to kill everything in order to avoid their being, but it was in the instructions. So now these clowns have gone and kept the best of what they thought was this, best of what they thought was that, and it could be one of these Amalekites is gonna rise up and kill y'all because you didn't because you didn't follow the instructions. When God chooses to use you for one of his missions, victory is guaranteed. But listen, don't just follow the instructions. Explicitly execute the given instructions. Proverbs 21 tells us, the Lord is more pleased when we do what is right and just than when we offer him sacrifices. Listen, you ain't got to be cool with it. Just do it because God said do it. If God said it, do it. So let me just real quick, the Amalekites. Who were the Amalekites? Why were they such a big deal? Why were they tripping? The Amalekites were what you call nomads. So they were of Nordic descent. So they didn't have any real home. They just wandered from here to there. And these cats just like to pillage and fight. And their home territory was Canaan. All right? So, they, but they just hated the Israelites. They were the first group to attack the Israelites when they came out of Egypt. And they kept attacking these boys. They even hooked up with the Canaanites. They, uh, they hooked up with the Moabites. They hooked up with the Mid. You got to watch them ites. <laughs> them ites. This is in Judges 6. I'm in the Word. They were responsible for repeatedly destro destroying their food supply, they just was irritating them. Then there was another fight in Exodus 17 where uh, uh, they were fighting and the Israelites were fighting and, and, and Moses was getting tired. He was holding, as long as he held his arms up, uh, the battle was won. His arms got tired, they started losing. So his boys, Aaron and her, took him, yo, sit on this rock right here, bro, and look here, we're gonna hold your arms up. And as long as his arms were held up, they won the fight. Guess who they was fighting? The Amalekites. Again. Listen, a key to, to obedience, uh, uh, one of the keys to ob obedience is, I'm sorry, one of the uh, 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 benefits of obedience and one of the keys to freedom is obedience. So listen, you're coming out of some things that you've been dealing with for a long time, like the Israelites. You're being freed. They're, they're being free from the oppression of Pharaoh because they obeyed God and they did what God told them. And yes, you tonight are being freed from some things. You're being delivered from some difficult areas in your life. And congratulations. But don't you think your enemy is just going to let you walk out and not challenge you on these things again. But thanks be unto God. He is not going to let anybody that belongs to him stay in a tough situation. But so long before he steps in and say, hold up. That's enough. Let's take care of this now. Let's get back to Saul real quick. So uh, 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 here's Saul. He's excited. He's pumped up. Yeah, we're going down here. We're going to wipe these jokers out. They've been messing with us for years. Now, you know, God said we're going we gonna to wipe them out. I can't wait. And that's exactly how some of us would act if God told us, hey, I'm about to wipe out some of your enemies that's been messing with you. They've been talking about you. They've been lying on you, scamming you for years. We're about to go take them jokers out because obedience invokes God to move. <laughs> However, stay mindful. Because in your zeal and excitement to get them, don't lose sight that it ain't you getting them, it's God. And because it's God getting them, it's his fight, it's his rules, and it's his timing. And truth be told, look, you couldn't do it no way, because if you could have, you would have. <laughs> Listen, you've been fighting your way with your weapons, and you just can't seem to understand why you're not winning battles, why you're fighting the same habits stagnant in the same circles and repeated cycles with those nagging addictions. The addictions even get on your nerves, but you just keep going back to it. Well, may I please tell you tonight what's going on? Can I tell you? It's been, well, according to 2 Corinthians 10, for, the, for we walk not in the flesh, 
as mortal men, we are carrying on the spiritual warfare according to, we're not carrying on our spiritual warfare according to the flesh using the weapons of man. What, what's the weapons of man? Your intellect, your way of handling it. For some of y'all, your switchblade. Some of y'all got switchblade in your pocketbook now. Handling it your way. Watch, somebody said, mind my business, all right? I'm going to do that. But the warfare, the weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood. Our weapons are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying sophisticated arguments. I love how the Amplified puts this thing, sophisticated arguments. What is a sophisticated argument? A sophisticated argument is that argument that makes you try to rationalize how close you can get to that sin line without totally ticking God off. That's what, that, that's what that sophisticated argument is. Well, you know, maybe he don't look at it quite like I do, so maybe I can do this every now and again. See, that's the sophisticated. It makes you think. It makes you think. And every exalted and proud thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God, and we're taking every thought and purpose, the purpose is the reason for doing something captive. I love that word captive because when you've got something captive, you've got control of it. You can do whatever you want to do with it because you have it captive. And the word says that we need to take every thought and every purpose captive to the obedience of Christ. But there's a caveat. You can take it, uh, you can bring it in, in subjection to the obedience of Christ after your own obedience is complete. had to readjust on that because you got to slow down right there. You can't take it captive and make it completely obedient to Christ if you still tow up. Let me move real quick. These canines, why did, why, did, why did Saul cut the canines a break? Because they were mentioned, I've got to mention them. The canines were coppersmiths and they worked with metal. So they probably made the boys dishes and silverware, probably stuff for their horses and whatnot. That's why Saul gave him brief. Look here, Doc. I'm about to fall in here with 210,000, and we're going to wipe these Malachites out. Now, y'all was good to us when we came out. We appreciate it. So I'm going to give y'all a little while to get up out of here. Yeah. Huh? Y'all pack up. Don't be messing around because I ain't going to wait too long. But because y'all was cool to me, I'm going I'm to give y'all a break. Because, see, obedience can save your life. Obedience can save, save your life. It's just simply, the Canaanites packed up and did what? Left. It wasn't no bunch of questions. I'm quite sure that, the, that my man White might have been tripping. What do you mean we're leaving now? <laughs> right now? I've got to pack. Wait, let me get some things together. It's, hey, Saul said they about to fall in you. Now, look here. You pack what you want. Hey, y'all get my kids and cover donkeys. Go down the hill. I'm coming. Now, you can pack up what you want. I got 20 concubines out here. What you want to do? What you want to do? Okay, all right. All right. So we leaving, right? All right, let's go. Let's go. Well, this wasn't the day of concubines. The brother had a choice. Come on, say amen. You don't have that choice today. All right. Now, I'm, I'm jumping down to verse 13. When Samuel finally found him, and I'm going to paraphrase now, when Samuel found Samuel had to go find this joke, first of all, because somebody told him, he, he came looking for Saul. Yo, man, where's Saul at? Uh, they, they told me Saul went down to Carmel, and he done put up a statue to himself. A, 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 a statue? Yeah, what they tell me? And, and then they were going to fall in there down to Gilgal, Gilgal for cookout. I mean, I mean, sacrificing under God. Sacrificing under God. Uh, under your God, Samuel. They go sacrifice under your God. So Samuel went and found him. When Samuel finally found him, he greeted him. May the Lord bless you. I have carried out the Lord's command. Yeah. Doc, where you been? We've been waiting on you. I, and Samuel looked. <laughs> Bruh. I know them ain't no sheep. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm here and some and some cows, but you done did what the Lord 
Command, what you talking about, bruh? Bruh? Well, listen. The, the, okay, Doc. God bless you. Amen. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> it's, so, so, so I said, it's, it's true that the boys kept some of the, the choice stuff, uh, but it was all for a sacrifice unto you. You know, it, it was all for a sacrifice under your God. Uh, we didn't mean no harm, but we destroyed everything else. Then my troops, see, when you in the wrong, you're going to try to drag other jokers down with you. And, and Saul's biggest problem was that he was listening to the wrong voice. Ah. The voice of God came to him, but he's listening to the voice of his soldiers. Whether he was scared they were going to turn on him if they didn't do what he said, or whether he was with them too. Because them boys had barbecue sauce, hot sauce, tater salad. They, they about to have a cookout. How huh? about this a sacrifice? Them boys want to sacrifice. Them boys kept the best of the stuff because that's what they want. But the instructions were. The instructions were, right? So let me go right here for just, just a moment. How many aborted dreams and visions, business ideas, Expansion opportunities, relationships, elevations are in this room now because of disobedience. I'll let you think of that because <laughs> this thing punched me in the mouth too. How many are in this room now that you aborted because you were disobedient? See, God did let you know. He told you, right? Because, um, I mean, we're children of God, right? I mean, raise your hand if you consider yourself to be a child of God. That's every hand in here. Well, yeah, I just set you up. Yeah, I set you up. Because the scripture says that uh, in Romans 8, says those who are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. Who are the children of God? Those who are led by the, children, by the spirit of God. So one of two things happen. Either you are not led by the spirit of God. Or you blew it. It could have been just <laughs> you blew it. <laughs> you could be led by the Spirit, but you blew it. Can somebody be led by the Spirit of God and still blew it? Blow it. Yeah. It's called a mistake. And sometimes, and I wish adults would learn it and teach it to children. Sometimes you just gotta say, hey, I blew it. I messed up. You ain't got to try to explain it away. Just say, hey, I messed up. I'm sorry. Can you please forgive me and let's reset? Because sometimes it's simple as that. I'm skipping to verse 22 now. Samuel replied, what is more pleasing to the Lord? Your burnt offerings and sacrifices or your obedience to his voice? Obedience is better than sacrifice and submission is better than the offering of the fat of rams. Rebellion is as sinful as witchcraft. And stubbornness as bad as worshiping idols. So, because you have rejected the command of the Lord, he has rejected you. This is another free point. Because somebody gave it to me, so I got to share it. Disobedience closes portals. There was an open portal for, for, for Saul to really had what he wanted to do if he had just followed the instructions and what God told him to do. But because he didn't, that portal of blessings closed. And yeah, God's, God's work still still got done because Samuel called for Agog who basically thought he had, he had got away with it. Agog thought he was cool because remember, they captured Agog too. They didn't kill him. They captured him. Right? They captured him. But Samuel said, no, no, no. Bring him out yet. Come here, come here, son. Come here, come here. The Lord said, because you were cutting up, <laughs> when my people come out of Egypt, you got to go too. And Samuel himself cut his head off. So with you or without you, God's work is going to get done. With you or without you, his work is going to get done. So I'm, I'm, I'm wrapping my right now. All right, all right. So listen, um, we had... Uh, uh, four four points here, I believe that I gave you. Uh, obedience can save your life. 
Obedience invokes God to move. Uh, there was there was another. Who was taking notes? If y'all weren't paying attention, huh? Who? No, that wasn't it. I, I'm sorry. I got two sets sets of notes. Uh, it, there's there's one more. I get to you later. Uh, obedience opens portals. But here's the one that I like that I believe God 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 gave me Himself. So obedience to God gives you opportunity to know Him in a greater capacity. Because see, trust earns obedience and obedience requires trust. So the more you learn to trust him and do what he says and what he says happens, it's easier the next time to get the instruction and do it. Because you saw it happen the first time. Amen? I'm about, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much through here. I'll Hope you got something here. I, I, I just want to leave you with just, just with, with one question as we go. Uh, 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 the question is, what if? Turn to somebody and say, what if? What if Jesus had chosen to be disobedient? What if Jesus had chosen not to turn the water into wine? What if the master decided not to calm the Red Sea? I'm asleep. Y'all going to learn today. What if the Lord decided to let the 5,000 plus be hungry and not throw the fish fry? Huh? But here's the big one right here. Woo. What if in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he was having a conversation with his father, and he said, Father, let this cup pass from me. What if in that moment he had decided, nope, uh, listen, Dad, I, 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 I wanted to do this, but I can't. I, I can't go. What if he had decided that? What if he had decided even after he went on and they began to whip him with that whip, with the leather whip with the bones in it? I know you know the story. I'm just reminding you. What if after they had sliced him open with that whip and then they're going to put a cross on him? Now, this cross, it wasn't this pretty cross like this here. This was a tree. So the tree had bark on it. They probably had bugs all through it. So his skin is already cut open. Now they're going to put dirt and, and bugs possibly crawling into his skin. And the cross was big and it was heavy. Some say the cross weighed about 300 pounds. And it was like nine foot tall. So that tells you that he couldn't stand up with it. He had to bend over with it and kind of drag it. Now what if, what if Jesus had decided to be disobedient and not go through? Here's, here's one for you. If Jesus had not kept going through this thing, the brother named Simon that came along to help him could not have fulfilled his assignment. Because see, your obedience is attached to somebody else's assignment. So you have to go through because your obedience is attached to somebody else's assignment. I'm through. I'm done. I ain't sure, but I'm done. You got to go through because your obedience is attached to somebody else's victory, attached to somebody else's assignment. But Jesus decided to go through. Why? For Apostle, for Craig, for D, for Tammy, for Bishop, for Tish, because they got work to do for his father's kingdom. They got work to do. So tonight, if Jesus hadn't been obedient, the hell to death and the grave wouldn't be in his pocket. The keys wouldn't be in his pocket if he hadn't gone through. And because others are watching you, others are watching what you're doing, your obedience far outweighs your sacrifice. Samuel thought he'd be okay because he did 90% of the obedience. Song says 99 and a half won't do. And God is requiring 100% because then you can have 100% of him. So I'm through. I'm through. I hope you got something out of this. But tonight tonight if if you if you are finding yourself tonight in that I blew it category there's good news 
God is the God of a second chance. That's good news. That's good news. Uh, there are examples. See, has, uh, uh, Saul blew it. He didn't get to come back again. He didn't get to come back again. Uh, 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 um, but there's some other examples of those that blew it but got a second chance. Jonah messed up big. Jonah messed up big, right? But God gave him another chance. There was a king named Hezekiah that had some problems. But he turned his face to the wall next to God for 15 more years. And God granted. Yeah, yeah. Moses blew it. Moses messed up. Moses, the man himself, he messed up. And he didn't get to see the, the promised land. But tonight, for you, there's grace. Don't abuse the grace, but there's grace. So I am just want to give opportunity tonight, if this is you and you're finding yourself in the category of, okay, God, I blew it. You told me some things to do, and I just didn't do it. For whatever reason, I just didn't do it. Tonight is your night to get it right. Because it can come back around. I, I've, I've got to give this example real quick. Because I blew some things with this man, Apostle Waters. And he even told me about it. I used to play for him all the time. He'd call me to, to, to play for him. And uh, the first from the first time I saw him, ser serving him was just all I wanted to do because of what I saw in his heart for ministry, the way he treat, treated his wife and all that. He started calling me, and he called me often. And then he stopped calling me, right, for a long time. My, I was more uh, disappointed that I wasn't getting the calls anymore, not because of the money, which he paid good, yes, man, and early, but because I was no longer serving him and the services were so impactful. Later, some months had gone by and he called me and a couple other young cats out for dinner at, at Fogo de Chow. Come on, say amen. And while we're in, in that dinner, he disclosed why he stopped calling me. He said, because I knew you weren't tithing and I wasn't going to keep giving seed to you and you weren't tithing. That was my disobedience. That was my disobedience. But since that time had passed, I had begun sowing my seed like I'm supposed to again. That's why the call came back. Because God will give you a second chance. He will give you a second opportunity. Obedience opens portals. Can I just give you one more just really quick testimony? We're going to go. I had a, 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 a truck. It was a, a nice truck. Nice truck. It was a 2007 uh, GMC Yukon. Long one. XL. Nice. You know what I'm saying? And I got into some, some jam with it and, and uh, I was still holding on to this truck and um, I kept trying to get the thing right. And I was trying anything. <laughs> Hook a crew. I, was, I was trying to get these tags back on this truck, right? Because I couldn't get tags going. And finally, we, we, we've been needing a second vehicle for a long time. And so I had just kind of given up on it. It was, it was shortly after. The turnaround was shortly after my yes. Yes will change your life. Yes will turn things in the atmosphere. And I said, okay. I'm done. And I told this guy that was watching the truck. Cool, Jay, you bring it down somewhere. I, I told this guy that was holding the truck. He was watching out for the truck. I said, Doc, listen, this is yours now. Just take it. I'm done with it. I'm walking away. And he kept trying to, no, man, let me sell it. I'm going to give you the money for it. Uh, I'm going to sell it. He kept trying to, try, you keep playing, son. I'm just going to go right there. Yeah. Uh, he kept, uh, he, I told you some things I always wanted to say about the preacher. He kept trying to give to man. I, I, I'm gonna try to work this out, and you, you know I'm like, yeah, we can sell it. We can part it out, take it on tax. We can sell the modem tranny. We we can get the money for it, you know. But I said, nah, no, I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna stop. No, it's yours. I'm done with it. And we started going after another vehicle. 
My wife saw a vehicle that she liked. She don't talk very much to say things like that. So when she said, I like this vehicle, I went after it. And I started going after it. And we applied here, applied there. And we, we were getting some approvals because I had been working on my credit. Come on, say amen. amen. That's another thing of disobedience right there that you can fix and turn around. I started working on my credit, but we had got one proof, but the people wanted 22%, you know what I'm saying? Payment would have been like really, really dumb, you know what I'm saying? I was like, we can get it, but no. And come to find out that the people that was going to finance it, we went down to talk to them, and they said, I'm glad you didn't say yes, because the people you were going to buy this truck from is known for cheating people having ragged vehicles. But we kept going, and I had actually given up. I said, okay, we're just going to wait until next year. We're going to deal with this, with this one vehicle. And one night after a class I was doing online, I got a call. I didn't recognize the number. I just, you know, <laughs> pick up calls. I don't recognize and, and I picked it up. God said, yeah, hi, this is Pat from blah, 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 blah. Did you call about a truck a few weeks ago? Yeah, our people seem to not follow up with you. I forgot about it, right? I was like, okay, I could have. Why? What's up? Well, if you're still interested, we could do da, da, da. So I said, you know, my faith wasn't real high. I was like, all right, go ahead. Let's go see. Not only did we get a yes, but the interest rate we got so much better and tonight my wife is driving this big black pretty Cadillac Escalade sitting out there it's pretty too it's pretty Craig, it's pretty dark running boards come out and things you know it's nice even, even the bishop rode in it obedience is your key to victory so tonight real quick we're done if you find yourself in the I blew it category and you just need to get it straight if you want to come to the altar you can tonight if you want to just lift your hand where you are tonight you can do that but tonight let's take some time and get it right and let's go back and get some of those blessings that we left on the table because we blew it there could be someone here tonight that blew the opportunity for a relationship with Christ. You've been hearing him call you and you've just been not answering him even though you know he's been pulling you. If you've been blowing it and this is your opportunity to shift and make a turn tonight, just lift your hand tonight and we'll come to you. If you're online, just, just, just write in the, in the chat, I blew it and I need Jesus. Someone will contact you and we will lead you to Christ. Perhaps there's someone here that God's been telling you to join the church and you just haven't been moving towards that. This could be your opportunity tonight. Just raise your hand tonight. Say, I want to join tonight. If you're online, type in the chat. Tonight's my night. I've been blowing it, but I want to I wanna get it right. I want to get it right. Father, I believe I've done what you told me to do tonight. If there's somebody's heart that's pricked here tonight, God, but they didn't have the courage right now, God, continue to work on their heart, God. Let them come to us, come to the elders of the church, even after the service, to get it right with you. But, Father, as a group tonight, we lift our hands and our hearts for anything that we've blown with you, and we say, God, we messed up. Forgive us, God. Let us set it right and start afresh with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you got something out of this word tonight, give God praise. tonight 
If you saw and felt the evidence, those of you on the hill, just stand in agreement. Stand in agreement. Clergy, I respect here tonight. You saw the evidence and the fruit, and you two are in agreement with your stand. That's the priest prophet of the house. We find ourselves in this birthing room tonight. We pushed, and God has brought forth a son. The mantle that's even on my neck, the shawl that covers my head in prayer. The Lord has called you into the gospel ministry, not me. The Bible says that Samuel took the horn. And because it was the chosen one, David, at that moment. But tonight, it's Lewis. Pour the oil. On your head. My hand of blessings. Father, tonight you make Rusty a minister of the gospel. You call him, you set him aside, and you've chosen him for such a time as this. It is your will. That we confer this blessing. A double portion of the anointing on this house rests on this first son, this chosen nation, this oracle of God. This is the Lord's son in whom he is well pleased. It's in the matchless and the mighty and the power. Name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Let us fill this room with Toda. 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 The hill has now given birth to a son. Lewis Rusty Saunders. Sit down. Turn around, sit down. Let him sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Come on. Come on. Come on. Celebrate the Lord. Celebrate the Lord. Celebrate the Lord our God. That's not it. Can we go higher? Can we go higher, higher, higher? Higher, higher, higher. Hey, higher, shaman. You tell them I stand on your both sides. Come on, somebody rejoice. Like the angels in heaven. Let everything that have breath. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And now, and so we got to mark him. 
We got to mark him. And the mark tonight is the tab. I am thine, O oh Lord. I have heard thy voice and it's so I love to me, but I long to rise in the arms of faith and be close. papers certificate of consecration and affirmation on behalf of the office of the bishop pastoral office of the hill of Howard County after due examination course requirements I hereby confer and elevate Lewis Rusty Saunders to the holy office of minister being charged to carry out the duties and responsibilities according to the bylaws and constitute of this faith assembly administered by my hand on the 30th day of September in the year of our Lord, 2022. Signed His Grace, Antoine O. McClurkin, Elder Elect J. Tish Briscoe, Executive Steward, Pastor Shauna, would you give him his papers? He's licensed to drive the car. And won't you stand so that the people may acknowledge you? Put your hands together for this new minister on the scene. Lewis Rusty Saunders. Come on. Come on, celebrate him. Celebrate them. Celebrate them. Celebrate them. Now, come on. Thank God for his life. Thank God for his life. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. 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 Yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Thank God for the word tonight, the benefits of obedience. Thank God for the word. And we thank God for the vessel. We thank God for the moment in him and in the earth. Amen. All right, it's giving time in our father's house. Let me tell you, let me tell you what, pretty much what he's up against. 
being around these parts. One, he has to develop a library that's in sync to what we teach, what we believe. Second, we'll put that rascal in the car and take him up to Renzetti's because he has to be adorned in the garment. Uh, and thirdly, there are some other accoutrements that he'll need in his journey. And uh, we send him forth in that. Amen. So the church takes him and we secure his garments and all of those kinds of things. Amen. There's uh, ones that have come before him that can testify. The bishop takes very good care of the associates of this house. Amen. Amen. They ain't prompt and prodded to say that. That's genuine and real because I know how it is to step into this and be forgotten. And so I promised the Lord if he would ever allow me to birth children in the spirit realm, they would always be well taken care of. Only problem is these are spoiled. And so now I got a son to break up the monotonous with all of these girls. Hallelujah. Yeah, some testosterone in the room. All of that estrogen I had, you know. They think they my father, you know. But anyway, I need you to stand with me giving tonight um, according to the measure of your faith. I'm not coming to beat your head over for any offering tonight. For those of you that stand with me with a hundred dollars, you can. Um, you know, if you ain't you ain't there, I ain't talking to you. Just get as close as you can get to it tonight. Thank you, brother, sister. Thank you, brothers, for standing with me tonight. Amen. Thank you, brothers. I see you. My children are standing with me. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We thank you for standing with us tonight. We're going to march around to the table tonight. Amen. We're going to come around, stand in the middle, daughter. Amen. Amen. Uh, you got the request. And if you request ain't where you are tonight, just do your best. Amen. Amen. That's all we ask. Amen. You see how quiet y'all are? On giving, I need y'all to shake that up. We we make noise around here. We, we we dance to the offering basket because anybody remember when you put change in the basket? You remember anybody else in the room with me? Oh y'all y'all too good. Y'all always had money. I used to have fifty cent to put in the basket. Amen. But I thank God for Jebusha for a change. Anybody thank him for a change? If he changed her. The way you give and the way you look at giving. Come on, jump up on your feet real fast. The Lord is blessing me. He's blessing us right now. Come on. Come in from the rear of the church. Come down the side aisle to my left. To my left, your right. If you come down this way and back around. Come on. Those of you that are online on our YouTube channel, you see the opportunities to give there on the screen. Come on. You're writing a check, make it payable to the hill. Come on. The Lord is blessing me right now. Oh, right now. The Lord is blessing me. said the Lord is blessing me right now oh right now you woke me up this morning and started me on my way the 
Lord is blessing me right now, oh, right now. You woke me up this morning. I was clothed in my right mind. He didn't let me sleep too late. He woke, he woke, he woke me right on time. He woke me up. Blessing me right now, oh, right now. He woke me up this morning and started me on my way. The Lord is blessing me right now. Come on, put those hands together one last time. Come on. Multiply for your kingdom here on earth and the work that you sent it to accomplish. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, we're ready to go home. Just a couple of things. There's a real hot, delicious meal prepared for you over in the fellowship hall. So you ain't got to slide past the Arby's or the McDonald's. You can go over there for some fresh prepared, good food. Amen. And some desert and uh, Rusty's going to go over there in a little while to fellowship so y'all can fellowship for a little while. Amen. Hang out. Have a plate. Uh, rub elbows. Amen. Critique your sermon. Whatever you want to do, you know, just don't hit him. Don't hurt him. Amen. Amen. Because he officially a son of the hill, so I got to officially watch out for him now. So don't y'all hit him or hurt him. Don't do nothing to him. All right. Amen. Amen. His big sister said, you better not. I believe she got something in that, in that pocketbook over there. And his, his wild sister in the back, Tammy, amen. She just fight on sight. That's what she did. Deb may ask you a question, but that one back there. Wave your hand, Tammy, so we can see. Uh, 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 praise the Lord. She on sight. I uh, see it's going to be a misunderstanding, Amen. Man, it's good to see you tonight. My sister beloved is coming to the house, Pastor Faith Churn Smith. Thank God for you tonight. We love you much. We love you much. We love you much. We're going to ask, uh, we're going to ask Mama uh, to come and give us blessings and benediction tonight. Ain't your boyfriend, is it? Uh, you know, I'll be watching you. I saw you with that red dress on at that banquet the other day. Yeah. Can I tell him how old you are? You don't want me to tell him. You know, it don't matter. You, you don't mind. 83 years old. 84 years old. Yeah. yeah. Pray your wife look like that when she get 84. Amen. Keep you coming home. Amen. Y'all give mama a mic so she can give words and the benediction. There you go, mom. I'm going to decrease so that you might increase. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Did not our hearts burn as the man of God spoke the word of God to us tonight? Amen. Amen. 
Thank you so much. I shared some words with you when I came before, so I will not repeat them. I just pray that God will continue to use you even the more, even the more, even the more. Let, let us stand. I pray that everything that your hand touches, it will be blessed of God. And whenever you speak, the words that you speak from your lips, that it will be like fire, like fire, so that men, women, and boys and girls will cry out, what must I do to be saved? Speak it, whatever he says to you in your ears. Speak it out of your mouth because somebody needs your gospel. Thank you, Rustin, for being you. Father, in Jesus' name, we give you praise for all you have allowed us to share tonight. We pray, oh God, that you will bless the bishop and everyone assembled in this room. And now the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you as you go out from this time and forevermore. And we all agree together by saying amen, amen, amen. Let the church. Come on, y'all come and greet Minister Lewis Saunders. God has spoken. Let the church say.